Today we're here to settle the disputes over the new color purple film of 2023 versus the original 1985 version by doing a side by side comparison of the scenes from the film. The scene where Seeley is shaving Mr. was absolutely heart pounding and riveting in the original film. So that's what we'll focus on in this video. We'll break down all of the elements of this scene in each film and give our thoughts on which film had the best portrayal. I'm Height. And I'm Cherie. And you've discovered Axiom Amnesia. A lot of you requested that we cover this film, and I can't wait for us to talk about it. But first, we want to thank all of the supporters who helped to make this video possible. If you want your name to appear alongside these contributors, make a one-time donation via Cash App, or click the thanks button on this video, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash axiomamnesia, or become a channel member by clicking the join button to enjoy all of the benefits of becoming a monthly subscriber. Can you tell us about the lead up to the shave scene? Yes. So in the original 1985 version of The Color Purple, starring Whoopi Goldberg and Danny Glover as Seeley and Mr., what happened is Seeley has found out that Mista has been keeping the letters from her sister Nettie for years, like decades. And, you know, she had been waiting to hear from her sister. He was the one who tore her and her sister apart. And so she's found this out and she's been reading the letters. I wrote a letter to you almost every day on this ship, on my first side of the Africa coast. And Suge, her friend, is the one who had discovered the letters. Her friend and also Mr.'s part-time lover when she would come to town had discovered, it helped her to discover these letters. So that's the scene that we see here where everything has just really built up in Seeley because, you know, she didn't go right away and say, Hey, you know, I know that you've hidden these letters. She just is secretly reading these letters that are from her sister throughout the years. That's telling the story of her sister and her two children that her father or stepfather had basically adopted out to these missionaries and they're living in Africa. So that's that setting the stage for this version of the scene in The Color Purple. Where's Seely? Home fixing to shave, mister. Now, let me just say that the first part of the scene where you see Suge Avery sitting out there just painting her fingernails out in the beautiful, uh, you know, land and everything. And she's like, it, you know, where is Seeley? At home, fencing the shave, mister. She don't think nothing about it. She just painting yeah. her nails, enjoying the weather. And just to think, she is painting her nails red. So mm -hmm. she got red fingernail polish. The so, symbolism. A yeah. red dress. And they intentionally zoom down to show her fingernails. Yes, the red dress, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then you get Mr. Berating Seely on the porch. Talking about get the molasses out your ass. I didn't come out here for you to take all day to shave me. And get the molasses out your ass. Right? And the look on Seely's face tells you something is about to happen. Yes. And, you know, because she's tired. She's sick and tired. And then... You know, Danny Glover, and I just have to remind everybody that there were people who said that Danny Glover had played this role so well that they just didn't even like him as an actor after this. They just hated him, which to me is a testament to how well he played the role of trifling Mr. at this point. Because, I mean, think about this. Mr. is demanding, come shave me, do all of this. So she's doing, you know, like basically his servant um practically his slave what's gotten into you i'm calling you for an hour now get my shave and don't keep me waiting you know so she's just deciding oh, i just have had enough the look on her face was just telling and let me just also point out how the cinematography we see celie in the foreground She's got the the uh, blade and the sound of the blade against how she's scraping it in order to sharpen this blade. This is ratcheting up the anticipation. Right. We just saw how Mr. treated her. We saw the look on her face and how she felt. And she is slowly 
sharpening this razor and he's in the back <laughs> with not a care in the world. I mean, and completely the, oblivious. just the sound. And then just how artfully we transition into this ceremony back with her children in Africa. Right. And the sound of this blade scraping and it goes right into the sound of the music. I mean, that just was just artfully done. So once Suge realizes that this is a dangerous situation and what could actually be about to happen, she begins to just run. And I mean, she's not exactly close to where the house is. But she breaks out running, trying to get there to stop Seely from what she suspects Seely may be about to do. At the same time, you know, we're going back and forth. Uh, these scenes are juxtaposed against scenes that are not actually in real time as far as the current time. This is back. You'll see young, young Nettie. This is explaining one of the things that she saw and witnessed happen when she was back in well, when she was in Africa, right? right? Because what's happening is that Celia has been reading these letters and she was reading these letters when Mr. came and basically said, smacked her and said, come and shave me, right? And then the actual novel is just a series of letters, right? So this is after time, Celia is way grown and Mr. has been keeping these letters from her and now she is finally getting caught up on what's been going on. So it is kind of happening at the same time as if you were reading a novel right mm -hmm. you got these letters that are from many years ago and that's exactly where Celie is in the African portion of the story right and so th clearly there's this coming of age sort of ritual that's going on and uh you know that and we can see that the kids are like a little bit afraid and they're anticipating we're afraid for well we're not really that afraid for mister yeah but uh -huh. we've seen all that he's done up to this point and we're just we're ready for it to happen to him mhm mm and then of course Bruh. he is impatient with her he's like get on out here ain't that reason stopping yet get on out here and do me right now Get on out here. I mean, because the whole time she's sharpening the razor, he's just talking mess. Seems like the longer I'm married to, the, the slower you get, the dumber you get. And now finally he's like, get on out here and do me. And she's like, all right. <laughs> I don't know what you're asking for, player. Yeah, yeah it was a, such a great buildup. And then just that other look on her face. Mm-hmm. Bruh, Whoopi I tell y'all, Whoopi Goldberg, this. she should have had an Oscar for, for this right here. They were wrong in 1985 or 86. And I think what is just so amazing is how everything that we see Seely do is actually kind of mirrored or Seely's either mirroring everything that we saw happening back in Africa with the with the ritual scene. Uh, you know, we see the the man approach the children as he's about to, you know, he's got his uh, his blades all sharpened and everything is ready to go. And she says, lean your head back. And then you see the children lean their heads back. Right. As part of their uh, ritual. Put your head back. And then, of course, we just see Suge Avery just running you know, falling and running, like running like she's running from, a, you know, a murderer in a horror film. <laughs> Trying to get there because she knows what's about to happen. And so do we. So then we see blood from the scene back in Africa. <laughs> and then Mr.'s eyes just open up very wide and he looks up. So the first time seeing this is like, dang, she did it. Did she slit it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and then he looks up at her. So when he slowly turns around, he sees that Suge is holding her hand with the razor saying that razor looked dull to me, Miss Seely. That razor looked dull to me, Miss Seely. But the thing is that everybody knows what was just about to happen, including Mr. Because you see him look, look startled, stumble back, and he grabs his neck. Realizing that 
he almost, it, it, Suge Avery done saved his life, really. Yeah. And she just got there just in the nick of time, which is wild, wild, wild to me. Mm-hmm. But that, that was just amazing. And the way that he showed that he had concern, but he didn't do anything right. He's been so abusive the entire movie up until this point. And he's so startled and afraid. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, like I said, he was just sitting there, no care in the world, thinking he had the upper hand and nothing would ever happen to him and that he could continue to treat her however he wanted to without any consequence. To just be like a deer in headlights and just say, damn women, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing else he can do. Damn women. And what I also liked about the way this scene happened was how at the end, like everybody, especially Suge, because she's been running, is breathing hard. So she's breathing hard. Presumably, we as the audience are breathing hard as well, you know, and they'd never move their position. She's still holding this, uh, you know, holding her hand up in the air. It's not like she went and took the knife and slowly, you know, no, they just froze right there in that same position. That's the position that Mr. sees when he turns around. So it's just obvious as to what is going on. So that's basically the entirety of the scene that happens in the 1985 version of The Color Purple. Yeah. And then so you do have this whole uh, soundtrack, too, because we didn't really get into what's going on with the score. Mm -hmm. But you got, I guess, what you could call nondescript African music, right? right? How they did back in the day. And that's going on juxtaposed with that ceremony and all of this that's happening. This ceremony that's uh about to happen to mr (laughs) right and so and one thing we should mention about the 1985 version is that it was directed by steven spielberg and quincy jones did the music for the film and so we're looking at whoopi goldberg danny glover you know steven spielberg and uh quincy jones is you know as kind of the the primary people who fed into this particular scene aside from all the other people who you know may have set up shots and did whatever but I mean, it is just everything about this scene was perfect. The, it looks it, it looked sunny at first, but now the skies look gray. It looks like maybe a storm is rolling in. Like there's just clearly turbulence yeah. uh, going on. And then you could see how remote this place is. They got the flies and everything. Flies who life ain't really that long. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Flies around landing on his face. Flies when Seely is sharpening the razor. You know, it's just. And what's the implication? Because the flies ain't landing on Seely, but what do flies land on? Boo boo. <laughs> he is like, you know. A, Mr. a piece of a shit. A piece of crap. And the flies are just landing on him <laughs> in the same way. And so, you know, he basically almost got what he deserved. Now, let us also talk about. What we did on our other channel, uh, the main Axiom Amnesia channel, if you did not see that, be sure to check it out, is we did a video where we talked about why the Color Purple 2023 flopped. And, you know, we used the word flopped because it did make less money. Uh, There was a steep drop off at the box office. There were a lot of people who didn't seem to like the film for a variety of reasons that we go to go into in that video. We'll link that in the description and you'll be able to watch it. But I'm bringing that up because the whole reason, part of the reason anyway, for this comparison is so that we can look and see how, how, how different these scenes were. Now, just for context, hopefully you do know that the color purple 2023 was a musical as opposed to a 1985 version of the original of color purple, which was not a musical, although it, it had a couple music scenes in it. So th- this one will be starring Fantasia Barino as Celie and Coleman Domingo as Mr. It's directed by Blitz Bazawale. And uh, the executive producers were Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, Quincy Jones. And um, so that's what we're working with in this particular film, the 2023 version. So in this version... The thing that facilitates all of the, you know, this shaving scene is different. The main thing that's different is that in the 1985 version, Mr. had no idea that Seeley had discovered the letters and had been reading them. Whereas in this version, the 2023 version, 
Mr. has discovered that she is reading these letters and then, you know, he backhands her. I thought I told you not to touch the mail. So in the first one, he's backhanding her for no reason other than just to interrupt her and tell her to come and shave him, which seems a lot more, you know, ruthless. ruthless. Yes. And in this version, it's like he has a reason because she, obviously not a good reason, but a reason to hit her because she has disobeyed him by going and getting, you know, the mail from the mailbox, which he had told her years ago. Don't you dare touch the mailbox. Right. And then he says, Shook's coming shortly. You know, come shave me. Yeah. Shook's coming shortly. Come shave me. <laughs> like, that's weird. But, though, so, even I know from, like, the 80s and 90s that when someone was coming, you don't really know if they're going to be there shortly, right? Depending on how far they're coming from mm-hmm. because of the phone calls and this and that. So, way back then, <laughs> did you really know that how shortly, shortly would be? Right. And then Suge is not coming because anything in particular is necessarily going to happen like she was in the 1985 version. She's just coming as far as we know. She's coming for a visit, whatever. And I thought she just popped up. You know. You know, the maybe at times. So then we see Seely begin to sharpen the blade. (laughs) So in this version, if we're going to compare them, Clearly, Seely seems hurt and afraid, whereas in the first version we saw her, she was angry. There yeah. did there was no fear. There was she no, wasn't shaking. No, she wasn't crying. She's just like, here we go. Mm-hmm. She's angry. Whereas it's almost like in this version with Fantasia, she's, uh, you know, what am I gonna do? He hit me. I'm mad. You know, she still is part partly broken from what he's done. Whereas I yeah. feel that Whoopi Goldberg was no longer broken in that moment. She was like, I have healed. My sister is alive. My babies are in Africa. And this man is about to get sent yeah. to his maker. But in the new version, the shave means nothing, right? The shave is just, I have to go and do this thing this man is forcing me to do. In the other version, it's he goes, she's about to shave him and we as an audience know what that means because of the look of her face. He's about she about to take him out. And this one is OK. She's nervous or she's just kind of upset that he done whatever. And now he just she just has to shave him. Well, and then in this version, there is also no symbolism. Right. You, like you said, the shave means nothing in the first version. And we probably didn't say it in the it, as, as it was playing. But you have this juxtaposition of the, what's going on in Africa with the rite of passage. These children are, you know, progressing on to the next stage of their development. Right. And in right. a lot of ways, that's exactly what was happening to Celia at that time. Exactly. But when you don't, when you take that out of there, then you're taking away a whole bunch big chunk of the symbolism of the scene it's not just simply about oh Seely getting ready to get him back you know it's it's saying that Seely has changed she is not the Seely you saw yeah. before she found those letters and began to rebuild herself and realize that the only person who ever loved her in her life her sister is still alive and has her two right. children when he smacked her in the original and then she went got that razor that's when it's over she is now a new woman yes. at that point this yes. one she's crying and stuff she's still the same Seely we've known the, you know up until that point kind of she hasn't crossed that threshold she's still weak and afraid of him and still willing to for lack of a better phrase take his shit yes and let me also say that we can all, we can compare as well from the twi- from the 1985 version remember when Sophia played by Oprah Winfrey was hit by the mayor right when she said hell and she don't even get to say no nah. i said hell uh, before he hits her and then she comes back and she hits him right away right the expression on her face when she was about to knock him out like that is it's almost like mimicking that that Seely has come into her own, right? Seely right. has that because see that was something that Seely always envied 
about Sophia, right? And she even somewhat admits that along the way is that Sophia is this stronger woman who is not going to let somebody beat up on her, who is not going to, you know, and Celie didn't have that, right? And now Celie has changed. And so this is a whole reason why, and we go back to the scenes from Africa, she has gone through the metamorphosis that needed to happen for her to become this stronger person. So, you know, to Mr., she looks in the 1985 version, she looked like the same Celie, but this is not the same Celie. Now, maybe in this 2023 version, Celie is having this change right in this exact moment, but it's, 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 I think it diminishes the significance yeah, of this shave scene but when she still seems meek and afraid. Exactly. In this but we can't see her doing it. Right. That's part of why you show things in the movies. We can physically see that Celie was changed in the original one. Mm -hmm. In this one, we see that she is in the same position she's been in for much of the movie. She starts to shave him and then it's just like, oh, I'm so I'm very nervously shaving him because I don't want to nick him or cut him. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole that's the conflict there is she afraid of him and doesn't want to cut him. It's what it looks or, like to me. That's or maybe, but see, see, and I think this is where it's muddy, right? We don't know what she's really thinking. She could be thinking, I'm scared of him. She could be thinking, I'm having this internal conflict where I want to kill him. I don't want to kill him. I don't want to well, kill him, but I'm scared to kill the him. The only reason you know? I would think she have that one, that internal conflict of wanting to kill him, is from what you already know about the story. If I've never seen the movie or read the book or anything, right? Mm -hmm. If I didn't see the first one, I'm not thinking that here. And the fact that we don't clearly know what the deal is makes it kind of a miss, right? A you know, it's just it's it's not it's not connecting the way um, that it really should connect. Yeah. But they are trying to ratchet it up with the music and give us some little yeah. bit of anticipation. But maybe if we only had this version, yeah. then we could go oh, okay. But we had a stellar version with the first one, and the <laughs> comparison is just making yeah. it you know really hard to. Yeah, but that could be intentional, too, that they wanted to change the meaning here. Perhaps. Of, you know, what Celie's going through and thinking. Because that first scene that we watched, you know, with the original, she did not touch him with that blade mm -hmm. at all, with that razor at all. Because had she touched him, he'd have been laid out. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, I'm thinking about it. It's already made up my mind once I got this razor. Mm-hmm. Now we see that Suge does save his life inadvertently, I guess, you know, uh, uh, come on. but it's just a coincidence, right? It's not yeah. a deliberate thing. Suge just happens to pull up the horn honks with her and her new husband. And, you know, th he snatches her hand off and that's, th yeah. that's it. Because he was just waiting for Suge. The minute after me and Grady got married. It completely took away from like whatever was going on there because now it's just in the background, whatever Suge is talking about, mm -hmm. right? And being jolly and stuff. And I guess that's a message, right? That Suge shows up and she's all happy and stuff while Celie is um, meek and afraid and, and depressed sad and sad. on the porch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So at the end of the scene, Everybody's leaving, but we see that Mr. is devastated in a way. Miss Seeley, we's married ladies now. And he's upset in a way, but this is yeah. very different than Danny Glover and for very different reasons. He's upset because Suge is then rolled up, his boo then rolled up, married, with her new husband. Yeah, and he's unshaven. That's a time. And he ain't looking right like he wanted to be looking. But more importantly, like, you done yeah. came up here with your husband. They brought him in the house. And, you know, Suge yeah. is like, we both married women now. But, you know. So without the original version, nothing is really wrong with this scene. Right. Right. <laughs> because, hey, whatever you wanted to communicate, God communicated. But because there was such significance in that scene in the original, then it's like, oh, yeah, this is a pivotal scene. This is an iconic scene 
Uh, but the new one is just something that happens right when Shook shows back. That, that's basically the scene. It's not even the shave missed the scene. It is the Shook is married scene. <laughs> yeah, Shook comes back with a husband scene. You know, the question is, we never really know if she intended, if Celie intended to, uh, you know, to, to slit him on from ear to ear. We, we never really know that. In the first version, 1985, we know Whoopi was going to do it. We don't oh, yeah. know if, if Fantasia was getting ready to do it. That's number one. And then the next thing is just it changes the whole thing because a- after that point in the 1985 movie, Mr. Knows that, C- he, you know, he got a reason to be scared of Seely now. You better sleep with right. one eye open. Hot grits could be coming your way. Like this woman is not taking your mess no more. Whereas Coleman Domingo here in this uh, 2023 version, you know, he's just upset because his woman has a husband now. Yeah, but then... What happened was Doug had to stop Seely in the original. And mm-hmm. then we got the dinner and it's time to go. Right. Right. Bro, that's it. There is no more Lolly guy. But you know that she can't be with him anymore. She is a changed woman at that point. Yes. Here. You know, Shug and them show up, and then what happens after that? Everybody going inside. Everybody and, you know, go inside and have a good little dinner. I don't know, today, tomorrow. And she someday. does wind up, you know, leaving, but it's just not, it doesn't have the same She impact. didn't reach the end of her rope. We mm-hmm. had, we didn't actually see the mm-hmm. end of that rope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... You know, so when you compare, like, I mean, if this is not obvious now, when you compare and contrast the 2023 version with the 1985 version, the 2023 version to me just doesn't stand up. Right. Yeah. However, if the 2023 version was a standalone, if we if you've never seen the 1985 version, then I guess it could be OK. But you never really know how good something could be until you have seen what was just superb and stellar right yeah. you know so i'm not going to say that the 2023 version was bad it wasn't bad it just wasn't nearly as good as the 1985 version because we know about 1985 which brings me to this discussion that some people were having in the comments of the video that we did on the other channel which is that maybe we may, maybe our love for the original version is just so strong that there's no room in our hearts for this Bruh, new version that's somebody what said, I said that that's what you at the said yes, of the video in that video but yes and people are like oh i won't compare this to the other that's fine if i look at it separately i'm not even watching it right because it's just not what i'm into so to me and there's some people who say i'm not watching it because why do a remake well it's different right but for me to actually watch it and try to look at them separately there is no reason for me to even talk about the new one Hmm. so we wouldn't even had a video if there was no comparison to say hey let's look at this movie and talk about it because like why well and i think a lot of people um, a few, not a lot. I take that back. A few people really took it the wrong way and felt that our criticism, which is what we do, we criticize every movie and criticize not in the sense that the criticism is always, quote, bad, but it's just that we analyze these films and we discuss them all. And we mostly do black films. Of course, we love black cinema. Of course, we love black filmmakers. Yeah. Um. You know, but at the end of the day, I think that we owe it to the audience to be honest about our feelings and honest. And it doesn't mean that we don't support because obviously we're going to watch everything. We watched this film. I wasn't excited about this film, but I still said, let me watch it. And in fact, I'm still willing to kind of go through and say, maybe give it a second chance because what I will tell you is I had made some comments um you know and uh, but I got into the music uh, one of the songs um that I really liked was keep it moving basically this was sung by Holly uh, Bailey every day the sun don't shine oh, keep it moving keep it moving and that song is just growing on me and I kind of like that song but I, I'm willing to kind of give it more of a chance to as we analyze and 
see see what we think. But if there's a, a scene that you want us to compare and contrast, just like we did this one from the original Color Purple uh, in the new version, let us know. Yeah. But what I would say is that I don't know why people want your opinion to be the same as theirs. Right. If I say I don't like this or I'm comparing this to the other one and that's why I don't like it. Why somebody would be like, no, you shouldn't do that or you should think it's good. You should like the music and all of that stuff or you should like the acting or you're wrong about whether or not uh, actors portrayal is good or not or better. Like that's you are not me and I'm right. not these you. are these are so, all opinions and yeah. our opinions are based on our own individual experiences perspectives and, and all these other things what a lot of people get enjoyment from is hearing other people's perspective not that or and sharing right and exchanging instead of saying i want everyone to feel like i feel mm-hmm. <laughs> some other people felt like oh y'all just want this movie to fail so bad and I was like, why would we want this movie to fail, actually? <laughs> you know, that doesn't make much sense at all. Of course, we don't want the movie to fail. But I'm not going to yeah. tell you I like something if I didn't. And my criticisms will be those criticisms regardless of, right. you know, if they, because there are plenty of movies that, do, that don't do well that we absolutely loved. Yeah. And why would I care if the movie fails? Like, what? I'm I not don't... getting paid off the movie, you know, no, as far as fails financially. Way. Yeah, you know, so... I don't have a dog in the fight. This, uh, what I really want is to have good movies for us to watch. I don't know if I said it, but if when maybe it's in a video that we'll be putting out on who knows which channel. But when I go to these different streaming services, all I see is white, 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 white. And I want some good black movies and TV shows that we can watch. And, and, not, and good ones and good in all ways where the script is great where we don't have some of the most basic things that are going wrong, like sound quality or, you know, just basic lighting. cinematography yeah. and lighting. Right. You know, and I mean, because now pretty much anybody, you could make a, a movie on an iPhone, you know, and, and uh, inevitably what comes up is like to be movies. And even the fact that that has become almost like a, even though people really enjoy a lot of them, a kind of a joke, a joke genre, right? You know, oh, the Tubi movies and you know exactly what that's supposed to mean. But I think it's nothing wrong with us saying, you know, let's step up our bar. What it, it, This isn't just good enough for yeah. us. Let's make it the best that it can be. You know, um, we believe in excellence. What's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, but there's yeah. a, but but that's not saying that we shouldn't do anything or that we shouldn't have grace if things don't go perfectly. Right. And it don't mean it's, movies and tv shows should not be remade mm -hmm. right but i think if you have one that worked and was really well is uh, i don't know if you should be doing that well you brought up something when we were talking about this too and you said is the color purple our gone with the oh, wind oh yeah and i said you know what I think you might be right. And for those of you who might be too young and you don't really understand, Gone with the Wind and, and, and to mainstream, uh, I guess I'd call it mainstream popular culture throughout the years, that's a very old film, but it's considered like one of the best, you know, movies ever made. It's an epic film. And much like this is an epic film, right? Over the span right. of many years of someone's life. And I guess you could say it's early enough in when we were able to make our own movies, I guess, even though we had the question of whether and what makes a movie a black movie. Mm, because but, see, the director here, Steven Spielberg, obviously is not black. Yeah. And that's a totally different discussion. <laughs> that's a whole discussion on its own. But this is one of those movies that everybody looked back to um, and critics really like it. And there's a lot of us, oh my, who talk about, oh, that. They don't like the movie and what it represents. And I'm not going to go into what the men think about it yeah. because that's just ridiculous. Because when you have movies about racism, then you get the racist white people who are like, why are they making that movie? Well, that's how the men sound when they the come. The thing is <laughs> that, and, and this is how I like, feel are about Are you both. doing this? Are you, you're upset that a character is portraying you? Well, and the fact is that this was a reality for a lot of women. And the fact is, just like when we talk about movies that portray, you know, other inequalities within, um, you know, American life and culture, that 
that those are realities for people. So you just don't want to hear what the realities were now. And this is one story. How many other stories yeah, one, well, are there that don't actually portray that? And the yeah. other thing I want to get on talking about, uh, because some of you uh, had commented about feeling triggered or, yeah. it's, and it seems like this is more of a younger sort of a thing where, Oh no, we're not, you know, going to watch these um, films movies. because they're trauma movies. But what's funny is the same people will be watching BMF and all of these other things. What do you think all that trauma is? That's not trauma yeah. when you watch a love relationship and hip-hop trauma. And stuff. Love and but hip-hop, the, the violence. The thing is, if you don't know stuff, you don't know anything about art, then don't comment on art because if you don't understand that how you have these great conflicts in the greatest movies and in the greatest pieces of art. You don't know what you're talking about, which is why the music that you like fucking sucks. Well. Because think about the songs of heartbreak and betrayal and all of that, that are absolute classics and the best songs. Right. And even the memes and stuff you share is about trauma and cut people off and all about my money. Don't care if you ain't doing nothing for me and I don't need a man. And all of this stuff is the exact same thing. But put a movie that can capture it and show it to you in a certain way. Then, oh, my, we've gone too far. Not another. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, especially when there are things that are like post um, slavery or slavery films, you know, people are like, I'm not watching that. But see, I think the real reason a lot of people feel like they don't want to watch those types of movies is because you don't want to be reminded of your actual history um, in this country because Bruh. what you're really trying to do in a lot of ways is get away from the fact that this is the history and otherize yourself in order to feel better. But see, I don't understand why you have to have a low self-esteem about this being the history because I don't. Yeah. I look at it and I go, hmm, we are from a mighty people who were survivors. That's how I look at it. Yeah. But, you know, and if you feel that, <laughs> you know, that that because that was the history. But also it's a story about a particular person right so like but some people called it a slave movie because you don't know what you're talking about mm -hmm. first off and like just somebody inevitably is listening right now if you feel that way you're tired of these trauma movies and slave movies what movies and tv shows do you watch tell me that because i could show you the trauma in it or if, if even they're if good, it's not just or the drama. whatever it is it's just just let me know what you watch the other thing is that in terms of storytelling, in terms of good stories, you're always going to have drama. If nothing bad ever happened, then you wouldn't even have a story. <laughs> there would be no conflict. There would nothing. be nothing to recover from. It's just that I think that many of these stories are triggering because they're hitting close to home. They're touching places that in our hearts and in our spirits, we are protecting. We maybe not, we were perhaps not addressing them head on and we just don't want to see it. Well, somebody you know? basically came out and said it and we want rich people on the screen and stuff. That's yeah. It. They want to be on something that's not reality. Yeah. Yeah. So you just want to continue to have escapism. But to me, some of the best stories are the yeah. ones that are, you know, real everyday people yeah, but you're not escaping anything all you're doing is feeding into this uh maybe we get into the movie origin the mm. <laughs> so yeah you're just feeding into something that's very that's more detrimental yeah but, we have a lot more to say about the color purple and actually prior to all of this we thought we hey we would just do a straight breakdown but i think this is better i really like comparing them because maybe in the comparison and and, and to be Complete. I'm going to go into each uh, each one of these comparisons with an open mind. I'm not going to assume that the you know that the new version is bad. Maybe there are some scenes where I'm like, hmm, they, I like yeah. how they did that. I like the jail scene, you know. Yeah. Oh, the jail scene. But see, Danielle Brooks, who played um, Sophia, the character originally played by Oprah Winfrey, like Danielle Brooks, is just stellar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that's something and that, up for an Oscar that wasn't way. in. <laughs> I hope she wins. It's something that wasn't in the original, though. So that's why it could stand out, I guess. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, oh, you mean going to visit her? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, she did go visit her in jail in the original. Did they shoot it the same way? Uh, no, it wasn't shot the same way. Yeah, this was. You know? Wait, we look. This is like letter from a Birmingham prison. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you know, it does remind you of that picture. You know, so I, I this is not to say that Blitz, the director of the new one. Or Birmingham did, jail. Yeah, did everything wrong. 
his 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 artistic interpretations uh, may have been, you know, straight on with a couple of the scenes or with multiple. So let us see. But anyway, be sure to go to the comments and let us know which scene you want to see us break down yes. next from the color purple, comparing the original to the new 2023 version. And join our Discord. We need you there because uh, last week YouTube uh, took our channel down. We can talk about that somewhere else, maybe. Yeah, but it <laughs> but was they this deleted, channel. Uh, they deleted this channel. If you were looking, yeah, they, yeah, inadvertently, and they said, oh, whoops, by the way, you know, and then it's back up. So if you were looking for it last week, <laughs> then that's what happened. <laughs> so definitely join our Discord. We'll have a link in the description so that you can always be in contact with us and know what the heck is up. And then also make sure you're subscribed to our other channel because the video that we were. That that's why the uh, color purple video is over there instead of on this channel. Yeah, it was going to be over one. here. Yeah. But if you made it this far, type the flies in the comments so we'll know you're one of the real ones who stick around to the end. Thank you so much. And be sure to check out this video on the screen right now.